to apply biofeedback within the program prep to help identify changes in formant frequencies so that we can better assist individuals seeking gender-affirming voice care and use science to back up what we use as far as informing, educating, and trials during motor learning for therapy. The article cited within this tutorial video is the effect of formant biofeedback on the feminization of voice in transgender women. And it is by Deanna Kowitsky and Tara McAllister. We know based on previous research that two things influence mostly what we gender a voice. Fundamental frequency or the pitch measured in hertz, as well as formant 2, which is a formant frequency above that. And the vocal cords influence fundamental frequency by the length. Higher the fundamental frequency, the longer the vocal cord tissue. The lower the fundamental frequency, the shorter the vocal cord tissue. But F2, or formant 2, is influenced specifically by the shape of the oral cavity, the throat, and both of these make a joint contribution of perception of gender, although you weigh fundamental frequency heavier. Research previously has also included that higher F2 values were associated with an increase in the perceived femininity of speech. And this was a study where people were in a room and they listened blindly where they couldn't see who the speaker was and had to rate different sound examples um, by what gender they thought that person was. And the findings were when F2 was higher, that person was typically gendered uh, female. So this study specifically used uh, 12 transgender women. So the sample study was kind of small, but if you've ever participated in a study, uh, sample size can be challenging to get large enough. Um, but I think using the vowels that they used specifically, which are a, ah, a, uh, and ah, in the words bud, bad, and bod, which if this was consistent, bad would be here at the front. So for our purposes for the video, we're going to uh, keep that the same, bad here at the front, bud in the middle, and bod. And what you'd want to do is open Pratt. I've already made some recordings here today, but for our purposes, I want to show you how to do this. You go to new, you go to record mono sound, and we're going to do, name it bad, bud, and bod. I'm specifically going to choose a low tongue base posture, large oral cavity space for the purposes of making the F2 very low. And we're going to make that recording now. Bad. Bud. Bod. We're going to save to list. Then we're going to increase the F2. Same pattern now. Bad. Bud. Bod. I try to stay really similar with the vocal cord length or the pitch, FO, frequency, all the same thing as well for that one. So let's take a look at the low F2 by choosing it in the object window, pressing view and edit. And then choosing our second example with the higher F2 or the higher tongue base posture. And what we're finding here, yours, when you open up Pratt and download it for the first time, it's a free program on the internet. Um, it probably won't show formats, but up here in the top bar, you can choose what you want to show. So right here, we can choose to show pitch or the fundamental frequency, F0. It's all the same thing, and that's uh, here on this blue line, and then shown by this number here, 156 hertz, where comparatively, I'm really similar uh, about 147, so we're within about 10 hertz uh, for, for those examples. And then you just press sh uh, show formants 
to show formant one, formant two, and so on as they climb. So we're going to look specifically at the second formant here. It looks like this sample didn't capture uh, the other two, so I'm going to make that better for our purposes. I'm going to oops, I'm going to highlight this one and actually just zoom in on it. I said I was going to do that. There it goes. Then I just go to cell. It goes there. So if we can listen to these specifically, the high, I'm sorry, the low F2. Bud. Bod. So bud and bod. And then here, same thing. We're going to start our cursor here. Bud. Bod. So if we're measuring F2 here in this first example, it's 1279. And then about 1029 versus 1790 and then about 1286. So when we're looking specifically here, you can see that the higher F2 is shown by the larger red number and the lower F2 is shown by the lower red number um, relative to each example. So the more femininely perceived sound is going to be the higher tongue bass or the higher F2 within this example. Bud. Bod. And the more masculine percep perception is going to be here with the lower F2. Bud. Bod. But the pitch is staying relatively the same, so the buckle cord length, the, the shapes match. So you can see that better by taking away the formants and just looking at the blue line being pretty similar. In the same way, you can create some different uh, isolated vowels. So here's some examples that I created with just the vowel E in a low pitch, and then again in a high pitch. But within each example, I changed the tongue height in my oral cavity space to juxtapose that low versus high second formant. So I'm going to show formants here in this example and again in this one and let you listen to low pitch. So my fundamental frequency was low in this example, but I changed my formants with the first one versus the second one. So perceptually more feminine is going to be this first one where that second formant is really high up here at 2935. And then perceptually masculine one is going to be where it's lower at 2227. Let's listen to it again with the feminine sounding one uh, first, followed by the more masculine sounding one, specifically influenced by F2 only. Uh, uh. And then what I wanted to do is raise the fundamental frequency away from 134 to something that's higher. Uh, you can see it here at 214 across both samples, and let's listen. Uh, uh. So I stayed with the same uh, pitch or vocal cord length, but the thing that I influenced was the tongue height and, and the space in my oral cavity and my mouth and my throat. And this first example was uh, showing a second format or an F2 around 2900 where the uh, second example lowers it down to about 1935. So same vowel, same pitch, but different F2 second formant frequencies. Uh, perception more feminine for the first one. Uh, and more masculine for this uh, one. Using Pratt, it's free online. You can utilize uh, this specific article, or you can make your own things to try as far as sample and to measure. The study that you want to specifically look upon uh, is down here within uh, this Journal of Voice article, the relative contributions of speaking fundamental frequency and formant frequencies to gender identification based on isolated vowels. So there's been quite a bit of work done um, specifically as well as this Galena study from 2017, gender perception after raising vowel fundamental and formant frequencies considerations for oral resonance research. I think the more that we're looking at how perception of gender is made based upon um, what we're doing to influence the formant frequencies, uh, the stronger our services are going to be at helping individuals live better quality of lives. 
and this is uh, a place to start doing that.